Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. In this episode, I'm going to take you through the version 2 of our How We Manage Live Streaming Breaks. And this is our way of showing a schedule or information to the viewers during a live stream. So what are we doing and why might you want something like this? Well, whenever a viewer is watching a live stream and there's a break, often in conferences there's breaks of 30, 40 minutes, what you want to give them is information about what's coming up and how long they might have to wait before those things happen. Now here's an example of an older way we used to do it and uh, this gives a little bit of a countdown timer and it shows them basically what to expect, what's coming up next and why they should stay tuned. In order to make this happen, we're basically just putting a Chrome browser on top of our uh, wide camera shot. So anything we put within the Chrome browser window will just display on top of the shot. The reason we're doing it this way, instead of using images through Photoshop or something like that, is that we can use countdown timers and we can be a bit more dynamic in the content that we show to the uh, audience. Now in our previous video, we have shown a way of doing this through the HTML in a web page, but we've since taken away from that. Now we run a piece of JavaScript on the web page and then we use Google Sheets to feed information into that. So we don't have to touch the web page, we just go into Google Sheets, update the information we want and refresh the Chrome browser. The gear we use to make this happen is a Latte Panda Mini PC. It runs Windows 10 and we can also use a Chrome browser within that, send it full screen out over the HDMI and run it into our ATEM mixer. One other thing we'll need is a keyboard and mouse just to refresh the page. The first thing I should mention is that this is probably not a tutorial on how to make code or write good code. It's more about just showing you what we do and giving you an example of what you can do as well. It all kind of begins on the computer in the web browser and I use this thing called JS Fiddle. Here is a starting point. It's actually by a different author called the Ummer or something like that. And it basically allows you to pull information from a Google spreadsheet. So you can see here that the large image value references their spreadsheet sample. So it's as easy as making your own version of that, which is what we've done here. You can see our final fiddle here, which includes all the changes we've made a whole bunch of them, as well as CSS tweaks and a few things like that to make it look the way that we wanted it to look. And you'll find some links to the original fiddle and to our version and a few other things in the blog post in the video description if anything's not clear. So next up I need somewhere to host all this information and that's why we go over to the Here to Record website and uh, on this page I'll be able to copy and paste all the information. So I put the HTML stuff at the very top I'll put the JavaScript between script tags and I'll put CSS between these style tags. And you can see here we won't win any awards for nice clean code but it does work nicely. So here's what our version of the Google spreadsheet looks like. Again this is just the same as that sample one from before but we've done a few modifications to suit our needs. So the information on this sheet is specific to a schedule for a conference or an event. You can see here the name, John Barker or some variation. You can see the profile picture, that's just an image that's stored online somewhere. You can see the person's talk title and the date and time that this talk is starting. And I'm just setting it so that it starts very soon, so you can see what happens in a second. And this section tells if it's a future or a past talk, so if it's something coming up or if it's already happened and started. And this is updating in real time based on the time of day. So for example, when this talk actually starts, the real time column goes from future to past saying that this is now in the past this talk. And the rest of the information here is just some CSS specifics that we've chosen to throw in there uh, to make the, the page look a bit nicer. Now over to the Latte Panda Mini PC. Uh, you can see in our last video what we used this for, but basically it just brings a Chrome browser full screen so that we can display whatever we want. And you can see here the information from the spreadsheet shown before is now being populated into the uh, to the browser. So the talk name and the countdown timer as well. And that countdown timer is telling the live stream viewers how long they have to wait until the next talk starts. And when the timer gets to zero, it just disappears. And then hopefully the conference will start within a few seconds. Next up, just to put it all together, over on the ATEM switcher software control, we can usually fade between these two shots here. So this is kind of like a wide shot of the venue and then we'll just do a nice fade about 75-80% of the way through and we'll just leave it superimposed on the image. So this means that you can see what's happening in the background. Usually some people are walking around or the next speaker is getting prepared. 
And in this older example, you can just about see some people walking in the background. And I think that with the countdown timer, lets the audience know that something's happening and they can wait around for the next talk to start. And the great thing about this is you can brand it whatever way you want and pull information from other sources like Twitter or Instagram and so on. A few of the pros for this setup is it allows live updating through that Google spreadsheet. So if the schedule changes, we can easily jump in there, move things around and hit refresh on the Chrome browser. Two more things that we love about this is that it adds a lot of production value and you can brand it whatever way you want for the viewers, but it also helps the viewers when they tune into the live stream during a break and they can see there's only 10 more minutes before the next talk starts. A couple of the cons for this is that it does take a little bit of effort to get this going. You will find links in the description for useful pieces of code that you can start with and move from there, but it will take a little bit of effort to get it rolling. And the final con is that this thing can always be improved. It's, uh, it's working well for us right now, but who knows in a week or two, a month or two, we might find a better way of doing it. So we'll keep you updated with that. I hope you find that helpful and if it is something you're planning on doing, do let me know in the comments below if there's any problems you have along the way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.